All right, we're live. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching this. Uh, I'm not going to put it out on the actual podcast. We're just going to record it and then share it all over our social channels. Um, just because there's so many people that, uh, you know, that have this question. I honestly had this question about what is the length of pull? How do I measure that? Um, I've got a lot of different stocks, a lot of different chassis, and I'm always like, do I have this 100% perfect? I've seen a lot of different ways that people can... Uh, can measure this and can figure it out so it's one of those things that i've tried to to really figure out over time and and do but i want to uh say thanks to leslie for coming on she uh she kind of wants to be our guinea pig and she's gonna do it because uh she's gonna i'm sure probably put another gun together here one of these days and she's gonna want to know how to, to order the length of pull um next up's matt uh, you know, Matt's been on the show a few, or he's been on the show before. Matt's a good dude. Uh, he runs, owns, manages uh, AG Composites, and we appreciate him taking the time out of his day to, to kind of come on here and show us how the hell to do this correctly. Because I know I'm not the one to do it, so I'm glad I'm glad you're the one doing it, and I'm glad Leslie is because I can just sit here and watch and learn something. But I'll let you guys kind of get started. And now, Matt, Matt has three different ways to really measure. Um, the length of pull. And if you're watching uh, and you've got questions, you know, ask the questions. We'll try and answer them as we go. But uh, let's let Matt kind of get off and uh, let us teach us some things. All right, Cole, Leslie, good to be seeing you guys again and happy to hop on here and, and talk about length of pull. Yeah, for, you know, for all the shooters out there, you know, when that time comes to pull the trigger on that elk or whatever you're hunting, you want to make sure that shot placement's accurate. And it comes down to properly fitted rifles, one of the most important things. And then obviously after that, it's just trigger time at the range so that you're ready to go. But that properly fitted rifle begins with the length of pull. It's one of the very first things a person needs to do to start to build the rifle around their body. We're all different shapes and sizes. And so we need to take that into account when you're building, building your rifle. So the length of pull really is the distance from the face of your trigger back to the middle of your butt's your butt pad and I'm going to try the best I can to kind of demonstrate that with my rifle here. So, you know, at home, if you were to, you know, at home, you can lay this on your table and do this, but if you were to take a tape measure from the face of your trigger and measure back to the middle of your butt pad, that's going to be your length of pull. And on this stock here, the length of pull from the face of my trigger, back to the middle of my butt pad is 13.5 inches. And that's the standard for our stocks. We're about 13.5 eighths if you want to be precise, but there's a little bit of variability there based on how much epoxy is used to put the butt pad on. But 13.5 eighths to 13 and a half is kind of our standard length of pull. And that's going to vary based on, you know, I'm 5'9", so I'm just kind of an average sized dude. And, but for me, 13.5 is a, is the right length of pull, but you get someone who's 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", they could be pushing 14 and a half, 15 inches. We've done length of pulls up to 17 inches for a dude that was like seven foot tall. So, and then of course, the other direction, you get smaller frame people or, or kids and their length of pulls get down closer to 12, 12 and a half. But again, from the face of the trigger back to your middle of your butt pad, if you measure that with a tape measure, you'll get your length of pull. Now, how do you figure out what is your length of pull? And so there's a couple different methods. Uh, a couple of the simplest methods, I'm going to use just a regular stock. And I've got our little private two here, a little guy. So holding that rifle up into, you know, the shoulder position, dropping down into a natural uh, cheek weld. And I want to emphasize that anytime you pull that rifle up and you get down into that position, it needs to be comfortable. You don't want to be distorting or kind of contorting your head in any way, your neck to try to find your scope. You just want to naturally go into position, not stretch your neck, not pull your neck, just naturally go down. And then from that point, one method is to take three fingers and put that basically my right thumb is cradled over the stock, three fingers up, come down, the tip of your nose should be right at your, your fingers. So... That's one simple, easy method you could do. Leslie could do that with, you know, with the bipod sitting there on her island at her house. She can kind of get behind the rifle and just do a three-finger check. And the, you know, the tip of your nose is touching that index finger. So that's a real quick, simple method. 
Um, a lot of guys promote that way. So it is one way someone could do that. Um, the other method is same thing. You cradle it in this position and then you drop it down into the cradle of your arm right here. And there should be basically a half inch gap between the crease in your elbow and your butt pad. So that's a little bit, you know, that's a little less accurate than the three fingers method, but that'll generally get you in the right direction. So if it's greater than a half inch, you know, let's say it's, it's a full one inch, well, then you would need to add a half inch to your stock. You're basically bringing that butt pad back a half inch to get that proper half inch distance in the crease of your elbow. So with a 13 and a half inch stock, adding a half inch gets you to that 14 inch. And then that should give you, you know, that half inch gap between the crease in your elbow and the end of your rifle stock. So those are two methods there. The same thing with the three finger. If your nose is on top of your, you know, you know, basically in your middle of your finger, and let's say it's an inch over, then again, you would need to extend the stock out an inch to get your tip of the nose at your index finger. So adding an inch. So it's a little bit tougher when you've got a barreled action in there, just it gets a little bit weighty there. So that's where it helps to have a person or just using the bipod, you can get up there and kind of do a couple quick measurements with the three fingers or in the cradle of your arm. So those are two two methods there. Any questions on those, Cole or Leslie? Pretty straight. No, those are, those are, though, you know, those are kind of the standard ones we've always learned. Um, yeah. And it seems like people just buy a stock and try to make it work, you know, and that's kind of one of the problems that you have. And, um, you know, for kids, they're definitely going to need a shorter one, but it yep. seems like what are what are the solutions like if uh, you have one that's not right? Uh, is it to go buy spacers or to have somebody cut it off? Um, like what is the best way to kind of manage what that length is? Yeah, and you know if you go and you're buying a three or four hundred dollar rifle and you kind of just it is what it is. But if you wanted to add some spacers, then working with you know reputable gun builder in your area, they can you know add spacers. If you're dealing with a plastic stock, you know, it's a little bit harder to work on those. But if you've got a, a wood stock, then either cutting it down to take it down to a 12 and a half or adding spacers to take it up to a 14, that can all be done with a reputable gun builder. Um, we, part of our procedures when people order a stock is the ladies here will ask people, hey, do you need, you know, what LOP do you need? Because some people, they don't know what that is and they're getting ready to buy a seven, $800 stock and put it on a, a rifle that's probably gonna be two three four grand so might as well try to get it right so we typically ask people and if they don't know then we coach them through on how how to find the right lop or if they do know the lop then we'll work with them to just make the stock from the get-go the um the correct lop so we when we pop it out of the mold if it's a for a short smaller frame person we just will cut you know half inch off if they're trying to get a 13 inch lop if they're a, a taller person, then we'll add spacers to it and then put the butt pad on. And we work in quarter, uh, quarter inch increments. That seems to be uh, as precise as we need to get anything smaller than that. It starts getting into the weeds and a little bit, um, a little bit harder to deal with, but the quarter inch seems to be a good, good factor. And before we get, we're kind of getting to that third option. Uh, and this one's a little bit more precise using some, tape and tape measures but so if you take your rifle and again i've cleared it we know it's safe i'll put a piece of tape right here above the trigger area make it big enough and i don't know if you can see but there's a little tick mark on that tape i basically drew a line from the face of my trigger up this piece of tape and again i don't know if you can tell you can see that line but that line follows the face of my trigger right here. So it just goes up. So once you have that line drawn, you measure five and three quarter inches back. So again, from that line, five and three quarter inches back and put a tick mark right there on that piece of tape. That tick mark or line, whatever you want to call it, that's where the tip of your nose should be. So again, for me, Again, weapon cleared on safe. When I go up and shoulder my rifle, and I'll drop it down, and the tip of my nose is right at that, that line. So that works for me. When 
when you're establishing your length of pull, again, it's before you put the rifle scope on, because you want to make sure your length of pull is right, because then you can put the rifle scope on and then get the proper eye leaf from there. So when you do this drill, again, it helps to have a buddy or someone with you that can kind of mark where your tip of the nose is. So I would just call a friend and the tip of my nose is right at that, that line. So that works for me. I would call a friend and I would shoulder the rifle and do it a couple of times and naturally go down like you were to fall asleep behind your rifle stock and just see kind of where your face lands, your cheek weld lands, and then have your friend mark on the tape where your tip of the nose is. If you do that a couple of times, then you can establish where your tip of your nose is in relation to that line. If the tip of the nose is forward of the line, that means you need to make the stock a little bit longer to bring your nose back to that line. If your nose goes to the rear of the line, then you need to make the stock shorter to bring your nose back up to the line. Now, take into account hunting in different weather. Again, Leslie, we were all talking before we got on the show. I'm in the south, so if you're at the range in August, it's hot, so I'm wearing a t-shirt. But if I'm hunting in february we've got a long season here i'm wearing layers and so that can affect your length of pull but i don't think enough for your typical shooter that's going to be worry worrisome so leslie asked what i do and i said well i'll typically i try not to go to the range in august it's too dang hot but if i really need to go i'll put on a, a hoodie and a t-shirt because then i'll at least give me a little bit of a layer idea so that again, I'm training as I fight. When I get out in the woods, I'm typically gonna be wearing at least a jacket or if it's February, a little bit more than that. So those are just some of the tips that people need to think about when they're establishing their LLP is establishing it in summertime and establishing it in zero degree temperature, you're gonna have different gear on that can affect your true LLP. Is that why, uh, now I know a lot of people are starting to go more to the uh, being able to adjust as you go without the spacers, you know, some of the stocks are more like the chassis now to be able to do it real quick. Is there like a, a benefit over that, you know, over the the spacers or what do you think between the two of those? Yeah, there's pros and cons. We don't offer anything with the adjustable LLP because again, we follow our market and our biggest demand. And, um, you know, most people want they once they establish their, you know, 14 inch LLP, that, that is good. That works. They've taken into account, you know, layers versus not as many layers. Um, but the benefit to having adjustable LLP is that you could really get real precise on summer shooting versus winter shooting, shooting in the prone position. Uh, your shoulders are a little bit farther forward. Uh, so your LLP is a little bit different in a prone position versus, you know, in a tree stand where you're resting it on, on the bar. Uh, there's just some factors there, but you know, again, my experience and the guys I shoot with is uh, if you're within that eighth inch quarter inch of an ideal LLP, then you're going to be on target effectively enough to have a, a good kill, good kill shot. If you're an Olympic shooter, well then you're watching a different podcast. So <laughs> Yeah, it's got to come down to, to micrometer stuff. Do you want to walk Leslie through it real quick, just yeah. so that maybe she can really figure out, you know, on this stock now, she's already fired because she sent her actual AG composite stock with her husband. So she got her husband's rifle. So yeah. not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, but uh, we'll we'll go through it real quick and let Matt kind of walk her through um, how to do it, and we'll see how close this this stock is because it is a it's a factory Ruger stock, so we'll see how close it is to really fitting her. Yeah, so she's got that tape right there above the trigger. So if Leslie, you've got some, you, you put your uh, line there on the face of your trigger, and there, if you wanted to use a straight edge or you know a credit card or something, if you want to be real precise, but again, I think if you get it within there a few sixteenths of an inch, you'll be good to go. So now your weapon's clear, you can probably close that bolt. And then if you want to get behind the rifle and go ahead and mount it up to your shoulder as if you're going to, uh, I'm sorry, the back up, let's get your tape measure and measure five and three quarter inches from that tick mark back to the tape that's on your buttstock. All right, so you got five and three quarter inches there. All right, you put a little mark on top of that stock. There we go. Now that 
mark that she just put is where your tip of your nose should be in that area. So now if you want to go ahead and get behind that rifle and shoulder it, and again, she's a shooter, so she's going to find that natural position that feels comfortable. She's not trying to strain her neck or anything. And uh, basically using that, your uh, trigger finger, you can probably just touch the tip of your nose and kind of generally see where your tip of your nose lines up. This is where having your husband there would be great because he'd be able to look from a side profile and see where that tip of the nose is in relation to your red line. Pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah, uh, so. Little behind, but not much. Okay, so if you're a little behind, so let's say if you were a quarter inch behind the line, then you would need to reduce the length of your pull by a quarter inch. Yep. And, I, you know, I would do that several times. Um, again, having someone on the side profile is going to be able to give you a good good view. And if it's comfortable and it feels right, and then it's repeatable. And if it's, those positions are repeatable, then your shooting is going to be consistent. And that's what all of us need when we're trying to take down a whitetail. Right. Now, so what I'm taking out of that is probably – and kind of going back to one of your first comments is, is you're going to want to do it, you know, barreled action and, and scope, you know, gone off the rifle because a lot of people open their eyes and they're going to try and adjust to the scope, which isn't yeah. going to help you. You need to kind of go backwards from that. So you need to start the stock first. Uh, then once it's adjusted to your length of pull, then go to your barreled action, then go to your optic and then everything should be comfortable from that point on. Is that what I'm getting out of it? Yeah, you can get, um, you know, without having a trigger in here, you're not going to exactly know right where the trigger is. But for us, on the back side of your uh, bolt notch right here is generally where the trigger is going to be. So, you know, we've got guys that will stop by our facility when, you know, they live in our area and they'll just try out all of our stocks. But on here, the back side of our bolt notch is pretty darn close to the face of the trigger. So, again just using a stock only you can get a general idea of where your trigger finger is going to be and then dropping down doing a quick little three finger measurement you know three fingers for whiskey at night and then three finger <laughs> on your lop so <laughs> i'm more like a four finger some days <laughs> but, i'm the glut glut i measure by the glut gluts so i take the little measuring glut, 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 we're good i know right that's right <laughs> Drink safe, kids. So, yeah. <laughs> but, so yeah, do the three-finger measurement, which is a quick check. But then, yeah, Cole, you're exactly right. From there, you drop your barreled action in. And then you can go ahead and, you know, establish right where your trigger is. Put your little tick mark there on the front. Measure five three-quarters back. And then start to go through the exercise of, you know, what is the most natural position for me that I can do every single time in the most likely shooting environment that I'm going to have. And you can go to the range, put it, get it on a bench and all that stuff, but then take into consideration, are you shooting from prone a lot because you're out scouting and you're going to be in the prone or you're going to be behind a rock or, you know, for us, we're in tree stands a lot. So people got to take that into consideration is, you know, what is the most likely environment I'm going to be hunting in and how am I going to be taking the shot? Uh, see photos all around the world. Dudes perched up behind a rock. Some guys are in a prone. Uh, some guys like us are just sitting in a tree stand somewhere. So, but it's going to be a little bit different from everybody. Uh, once you establish that LOP, then, you know, if you're looking to upgrade your stock with an AG, then you can call and tell us, Hey, I need it to be 13 and three quarters. And then once you get that stock in place, drop your barreled action in, make sure your LOP is exactly right. And then go to about mounting your scope, getting the proper eye relief. Uh, again, you know, I was always taught from back in my days that you basically fall asleep behind your rifle. And if you're opening up your eyes, you should be looking right down your scope. Uh, mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to move around or strain to find that picture because that's the last thing you need to be doing as that elk is kind of passing by and you might not get a shot at it if you're fumbling around. Right. When I, when I do it and maybe this is right and you guys can all do it your own way, I'll get, I'll actually shut my eyes before I even get the rifle. I'll put it in, um, you know, in my pocket, uh, in the shoulder, set my cheek on it, you know, get it right, make it feel good, you know, get your, your cheek weld where you want it, and then open my eyes and see where it's at. You know, yeah. that'll also tell you, is your scope too high? You know, if you don't have, um, 
if you don't have like an adjustable cheek piece like the one he's got, that's another thing that you've got to take into consideration when you're doing this. And you're probably going to have to go with a cheek riser or some of that. So there's yeah. definitely different little things that you're going to have to realize when you're doing this. And you've got to make your head comfortable. I don't know how many times, how many classes I've ever taken. They're like, you can't, you know, repeatedly strain your head. Uh, and repeatability and optics is everything, you know, being able to see that. And that's one good thing. If I'm going to recommend anything, do exactly what he's saying. But also, if you can afford it, try and go with the adjustable cheek piece because that's going to set you up 100% perfect every time. It's going to get your cheek walled right. Uh, everything's going to be perfect. If you can't, there's some great options for cheek risers out there, Amazon, different places like that. And AG offers both. They offer, um, I think the one... You've got Leslie is not adjustable, but that one that he's got right there is adjustable and adjustable yeah. is money in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. And the adjustable one note on that Cole, is, you know, the, the hardware we use is up and down, but you also can shift it left and right with the, the pillars. And so uh, some of our customers, you know, didn't realize they had that option to go left to right. Mine actually sits off a little bit to the right, just a tad, just the way that just seemed to work out for me. But yeah, grab your buddy when you go to the range and everything you were saying. It really just helps have someone adjust that scope to get the relief. And, of course, make sure your crosshairs are level and then you know, where the tip of your nose is at. All that stuff helps to have an extra set of eyes there so that you can't have that repeatable position every single time. Last question for me. How many times would you replicate that to, to get that natural index and have someone assess that line? Do you say – three times is is good before you know you need to make an adjustment just to make sure like the shooter themselves isn't doing something stupid yeah i mean three or four or five times you know just uh, and even walk away and uh come back and do it a few more times i've seen um you know some of the guys i've talked to they'll actually kind of back themselves into a corner so if i'm walking into the corner behind me you'd have, you know, my right shoulder onto the right wall and then my left shoulder onto the left wall, right into the actual corner to help kind of square me up to get some predictability in how my shoulders are at so that, you know, the more the more you do something, the more fatigue you might get and you might change up your shoulders a little bit. But again, I think if you can do it three or four times and you're going to be plus or minus an eighth of an inch of where your tip of your nose lands, then you've got a really good idea of what your LLP should be. And, you asked me earlier before we started the show on should you kind of fudge the LOP a little bit to take into account layers. And again, I mean, I see you're wearing a vest, so I would just kind of just think about what you're typically going to be wearing and, and wear something close to that uh, when you're sizing up your rifle. Train as your fight. Cole's an old Marine. He knows. I'm no damn Marine. I'm an Army guy. Come Are on. Are you Army guy? Yeah, no. I ain't a freaking Marine. I'm like, I ain't got crayons on my desk. Come That's on. That's right. Why did I think you were? Now I'm surrounded by Marines. Maybe I'm just they're starting to wear on me or something. But yeah, no, it was. Uh, I've got we've got a couple Marines on the team. Uh, Jonathan okay. Slisky's one. He was on the Marine Corps shooting team. He was okay. a uh, he was a scout sniper and stuff. So that's he's where I'm. Okay. Yeah, it was probably him. No, shit, no, I'm Army. So when it comes to length pull, I understand it because we always had our gear, our plates, you know, everything, and that's why the M4 was such a big upgrade because we could actually adjust the freaking butt stock, you know, with the old M16. It looked like a freaking idiot out there trying to. You look like the hot dog eating freaking champion of the world trying to go out there and shoot bad guys. So that's right. I, yep, length of poles, everything. Being comfortable behind your rifle, uh, you know, getting in the same exact spot every freaking time is is 100 critical in it. Um, and it looks like there's been a few comments. Jason commented. I know he buys a lot of AG stuff. Uh, yeah, from he does. He makes yep. some nice rifles. Yeah. Uh, and we appreciate you all for joining in. Um, if you've got more questions, hit up AG directly. Um, they've got a phenomenal customer support um, staff that does great. Uh, nothing but good things about it. There's a bunch of vets down there. They employ vets. Um, it's a great company, great brand. And surprisingly, you build a lot of stocks for other people that nobody really knows that you guys build them. But we won't go into that. We'll kind of leave it a secret. But, and we appreciate you guys coming on. Yeah, we stay busy down here. Yeah, we appreciate you having us on. But anytime, anybody got any questions? And we want to make sure that, yeah, anybody listening, if they're new to the industry, man, ask every single question. I really, I really despise the guys and gals in the industry that treat people kind of 
that they're stupid and it scares people away from the industry. You know, any questions, an okay question, you've got to start somewhere. And so mm -hmm. don't be afraid to call AG. We, we built the business, um, you know, the web from the website design to everything we do. We want to cater that person that has no idea what they're doing. They just want to be in the shooting environment. So call us, we'll talk you through it on how to do LLP, how to do everything. No, you can ask any question you want. We're not going to, you know, make you feel stupid because you don't know something. Uh, and if anybody out there acts that way, you need to stop because <laughs> you scare people out of our industry. Well, there's, there's too many good companies out there. And I, we did a episode, we actually wrote an article on this a while back about, um, I think it's the people behind the, the, the businesses that sell products anymore. You know, there's too many good companies out there that build the same kind of stuff. Um, and a lot of it's just going to the people that care. You're not just another number on a sheet, you know, um, somebody actually gives a shit about you when you're trying to buy a product because you, you work hard for it. And yeah. I think AG definitely does that. And that's why we've had them on a couple of times, but uh, well, somebody did ask, does AG ship to Canada? Do you guys have a distributor up there? Yeah, we've got a couple distributors. Uh, if they want to email us, um, they can do info at agcomposites.com or Pam, uh, Pam Tastic. Everybody loves Pam. So just P A M uh, at agcomposites.com. It's Pam at agcomposites.com. She can send you uh, the distributor's information for Canada. We ship pretty much around the world. We've got distributors in most of the countries. Um, so, yeah, we can take care of our friends up north. Okay. They wear a lot of layers, so make sure you guys take into account your, your Eskimo suit. So. Yeah, don't you know? You do a little different up there. <laughs> they do. I used to live in Detroit, so I was close to Canada. Oh, oh shit. That's bad news. I wouldn't tell people that, Matt. No, I, I made it out alive, dude. <laughs> all right well we appreciate you all for tuning in hopefully you guys learned something from this if if you guys want us to do some more of these shorter episodes more educational stuff let us know comment uh go to long range addicts podcast uh facebook and instagram page you know pm us let us know what you'd like to learn more about and of course go to longrangetactics.com uh, we've been doing some reloading classes over there and some of that ed more educational stuff and treating everybody you know like you're a human being not an idiot so uh, we appreciate y'all. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Leslie, for taking your time. She's going to go hopefully shoot a deer this weekend with her AG Composites boring rifle. And we'll see okay. people from that. And uh, again, appreciate y'all. Thanks. And uh, go back and watch this. I'm going to leave it up on uh, Long Range Tactics Group and Long Range Addicts Podcast. So if you want to go watch the whole episode, go back there and watch it. Thanks, everybody. Have a good Thanks, night. Cole. Thanks, Leslie. Thank you.